Hello everybody, we are going to do a little ecology based healing today in our body and our environment and I'm going to use this deck of cards that has been sent to me, it's only available in the US at the moment off Amazon but it's called the Glowwood cards and comes with a really nice bag to keep them in so you can put them in your backpack as you go hiking and they're lovely thick cards there's a lot of them animal vegetable mineral and not only do they have the actual card but they also have symbols around the side of the card so these will make great homeschooling tools and I'm just going to really talk about the nature of the card because there is so much to look at. You can make these as simple readings or as difficult as you want. But for the sake of today, we're just going to do simple healing with what I have picked out already. So I'm just going to put these down. And here is the beautiful book. I'm going to pick the first card out, which was the obsidian. I have a piece here, so I want you to take a breath in and breathe out as we bring this obsidian slowly down your aura. An obsidian is a volcanic glass, so it was born out of pressure heated up to tremendous energy. Think of that boiling point that you get to when you get mad and then it erupts and then it cools ever so quickly forming this protective and beautiful glass and it does come in other colors as well. I have two different types of blue obsidian. There is rainbow obsidian and there is green obsidian. But for now, I just want you to calm yourself down. Feel this working and grounding you. You can imagine that you are standing within this, that it is all around you. That it is protecting you. And think of how angry perhaps you got maybe a couple of days ago or even little bouts of anger in your daily life. Breathe in and let's just remove some of that. Okay. So we've grounded and we've protected with the obsidian. Just working behind you now as well. And I'm just going to open the book. And I'm going to just read some of the key words. Pressure, vulnerability, it grows in the soil. And that the message, one of the messages is... Do not forget where you have come from, a piece of the past carried into the present. Reoccurring memories, an area of potential volcanic activity can trigger eruptions. So we're just going to move that from you. Okay, bringing it down. And think of the calm after a storm. Breathe in and relax. Nobody wants anything from you at this moment and nobody needs anything from you at this moment. Okay. It reflects things away from it. Some witches and druids even have mirrors of this and they would look at the reflections. 
but I think this is a wonderful piece of grounding and protecting material. You can imagine your feet are resting on this rock and then it keeps you steady, keeps you secure and it keeps you protected. Okay, so let's move to the next card we pulled out, which was the Lily of the Valley, just about to poke through and spread its beautiful fragrance from these little tiny bells. This is also protective. It also grows in the shade, but it is it has vitality and vulnerability. And in my trade as a gardener, these are very invasive, but we welcome them because they're so beautiful and they hold this amazing fragrance. And the description in this book says, follow the warm, sweet wafts to this damp and shady place. And you will find a rosary of white beads dripping like tender tears. Romance here, and if you had doubts, is the surest sign of fresh awakening and rebirth under cover. Fragile blooms are so delicate and alluring, but they may be poisonous and wrap up an enamoured traveller within their jumbled roots a bit too tightly for a bit too long. The action has just begun, but already creeps along unseen, surprising in its reach. This valley is covered in shadows and the lily of the valley retreats when it is exposed to overt energies, limelight or open space. And this is perhaps a perfume that maybe your mother or your grandmother would have worn, beautiful smelling fragrance. And if this grows somewhere in your garden, on your patch, you may want to dig some up and put them in a bowl for next year so you can place them on a table as you sit and smell that fragrance. Because otherwise you need to get down near the earth. But remember, holding on too tightly can break the plant and the sap can come out, which is poison. And perhaps those things that we love and those people that we love all have a little bit of poison, doesn't everything in everybody? So don't grasp too tightly. Hold on gently. Give that person or that thing space to breathe and grow and move. You don't have to be joined at the hip. What are you doing? Where are you going? Why didn't you tell me? Don't worry about that. Lose that worry. That person will come back as long as you give them the space to. That thing will come back in its own time. But giving the space to let love blossom, grow, recede for a little bit. We all ebb and flow and our relationships do too. And trying to relax into things, knowing you have the protection of the obsidian and knowing that you can give each other space to do your own things. Okay. Now the next card that was picked was the fern. And we have a fossilized fern here. And I'm also going to run this down you. 
because this has the Fibonacci sequence, the golden mean, the golden ratio of balance, of structure, pi. Ancient symbol known the world over and the building blocks of life, a very fertile plant. And it is disturbance driven. It holds dominance and mobility. <clears throat> it is a pioneer and it grows quickly. They are all starting to unfurl in the fernery that I work in. They're all like that at the moment. And then they spring out. Okay. It reduces all plants except moss. So you can use this to reduce the things in your life that are not going so well. The spores of the fern fly high, so it stands for fertility as well. And they are light and free, these spores, and many, many softly drift on the breeze. So think about those seeds that you wish to sow perhaps for your business, perhaps for your family, perhaps for your studies. Visualize the little brown seeds that are on the underneath of this being shaken in the breeze and floating towards lots of, towards lots of nooks and crannies. They can even root between the cracks of a wall and spring out. They are tenacious. And like it said, they are a pioneer. So feel that Fibonacci sequence and feel that abundance it is going to create. These are things that like to also grow where it is a little bit shady, a little bit damp and cool. Some of them are good for your bathroom because they like the moisture in the air. They do have to be looked after though because they can become very invasive. So again, making sure you are not smothering your partner or other things, okay? It can be uncomplicated as well. So think of the fern, of it being low-key in the distance, giving a nice backdrop for things. Growing somewhere near these lilies of the valleys and underneath in the soil, some of these little rocks of obsidian that were spewed out years and years ago. And so the last card that was pulled is the European oil beetle, which exploits things. It is protective as well, yet it is vulnerable. And the mission of this little creature starts with an elaborate ruse. There is a hoax, a delusion. The object has been carefully chosen, a perfect, perhaps singular match. Social, socially supported, yet currently solitary and away from the crowd. Maybe that's you. Oil beetle latches onto an opportunity, gaining access to resources, a home. So this, the victim's energies and objectives are thereupon sacrificed and placed upon the altar of the oil beetle. So what is it that you have to sacrifice in order to get your goals? Do you have to make concessions with someone? Maybe you're both at loggerheads and neither of you will give an inch. Compromise will be the name of the game. Just 
just reading down these books. There's so much information in them. Okay. So the oil beetle will appear. It is a it is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It hitches a ride. It is a freeloader. It substitutes one thing for another, operating from a place of lack looking for sweetness, ambushing, lurking. It is crafty. Maybe that is someone around you, so maybe you need to work on your boundaries, or maybe it is you. If it is you, think, are you stopping that person from breathing? Let's keep, this has come up here and here already. But if you are not stopping someone from breathing, maybe you can compromise, maybe you can share the responsibility, share the spoils. But whatever would happen, this oil beetle could crawl over these, perhaps eat the decaying matter or eat the insects eating the decaying matter. And somehow all of these things will work together if a little bit of give and take is offered. Remember, the fern offers the Fibonacci sequence of change, of protection. This also offers protection. But these need to be worked on. They can go either way. Too much of one thing stifles another. So again, at this time of year, when this is recorded at the equinox, balance comes into play. In fact, balance comes into play all year, doesn't it? We are constantly striving to balance things. Maybe there is a tipping point needed to tip some of those emotions or those issues out and then you can rebalance again. Take a breath in, breathe out and relax. Let's ground again by using this obsidian. And let just run the Fibonacci sequence down you again. Restoring what needs repairing. So I thank you for watching this video and I hope that you will go out and buy this for yourself for when you go trekking, for your children when you take them out to the woods. Bring the wonder of everything to them. There are lots of amazing readings you can do or you can just pull out one a day and Learn from that. Great learning tool. So I'm going to love you and leave you now. Bit of different healing today. Thank you for watching. Take a breath in and relax and then go and have a drink of water. Bye bye now. <laughs>